From We Are Spectacular, this is a Spectacular Marketing Podcast. A podcast about everything brand, marketing, digital and social for the food and drink industry and beyond. I'm Mark McCulloch and in today's podcast is a keynote speech by me at one of the largest UK food and drink conferences called Peach 2020. I was asked to speak about what exactly was coming down the track from a marketing perspective for food and drink operators in 2018. It's a thought-provoking 20 minutes which implores people to change their mindset on where to market, what content to produce and what your team will need to look like to deliver success in 2018. So, talking about what's coming down the track, hopefully it's not going to be as scary as this, um, but there's a lot of things that we're going to need to get our heads around. And what we've been talking to our customers about and the clients has been about, um, you know, attention um, coming down the track and also having to rethink marketing so that we can all market like the year that we live in. Because for years and years and years and years, we've been marketing kind of safely you know, what worked the year before, you know, and just uh, ratcheting that up a little bit. And now it's all about, you know, blowing everything up, nuking it and starting again because the attention has changed. So a couple of quick things. If you want to take photos of any of the slides um, and you want to tweet me later and get a copy of the slides, no problem. You can also email me at mark at wearespectacular.com and I'll send you those too. So this is pretty much life at the moment every single one of us with our face stuck to our phone and again the whole thing that we'll be talking about over the next 20 minutes really is about attention and also about content so if all the attention is here and that's the punchline of the joke then it's about the marketing teams writing the joke to get the payoff so this is a stat from Match Pint, uh, Match Pint, sorry, which says we spend 220 minutes per day looking at our phone. So I don't know how attractive your other half is or how cute your kids are, but I'm definitely looking at my phone much more than I'm my own family, right? So we're all guilty of this. So if everyone's attention's on the phone, then actually where is the attention within that? So when you break it down, there's so much subjectivity and stats go around and things that get said in board meetings and and water cooler moments which then say Facebook's dead, Um, Snapchat's the big thing and all the rest of it. This kind of settles that argument. So it actually then says, well, here is the real spread of monthly users and this is monthly active users on these channels. And the one I really feel is forgotten up here is actually YouTube. So YouTube is the second biggest search engine out there and a lot of us as marketers and brands we're not creating a lot of content to actually put on there. So again, a good tip would be starting to look into that potentially. The M word, the millennials, um, we talk about quite a lot as well. They're not alien beings, they're not a super race, they're not anything different, they're just a bit younger. Um, So basically, um, this is a Goldman Sachs slide who are way cleverer than I am, but basically talking about who millennials are. So born between 1980 to 2000, there's variable measurements on that, but we'll take that one. The great news is the most ethnically and racially diverse generation we have as well. So there's some really smart brands out there catering for that, you know, diversity, like Simit Sarai, you know, the Middle Eastern sort of Turkish bakery and things like that. When you walk past there, they're serving parts of the market that are really underserviced. So again, looking at that could be big opportunities. They grew up alongside technology. So, you know, Facebook, the phone, swipeability, all that stuff, that's not technology. That's just a way of life. The radio and the telephone for me isn't technology. Um, so for these guys, it's just part of life. And then down here is quite important as well when we think about our brands and the experience that we're giving um, the customers. They want to have, you know, they've got high expectations, they're achievement oriented, and also for all of you guys running teams, they want to make a real difference at work. So what are you doing to sort of, you know, push that? How can they have a legacy? How can they feel that they're working with you to build something greater than just profit? And if that's not enough, you've then got centennials coming straight after. So the main takeout of this slide is the centennial generation are really into peer-to-peer acknowledgement and referrals and reviews. So 95% of centennials uh, read online reviews while shopping. 50% of them won't purchase if there's not enough online reviews. 
two and three read at least four reviews before making a purchase. So those um, sort of annoying people that stop right in front of you as you're walking down the street. 33% are also wanting uh, reviews directly on brands' websites. 60% of them are actually starting bottom up, so they're going negative first to then see what the groundswell of positivity is above that. And then also, it's a big thing about getting your reviews onto your brand's website as well. People want to see what real people are saying. And again, if YouTube's slightly ignored, the love and the uh, engineering of TripAdvisor is definitely undervalued as well in terms of how much attention we pay to that. Near me searches have actually went up 37 times in the last year as well. So coffee near me, pizza near me, sushi near me. And again, most of the brands and clients that we have and, and that we're working with, you know, this isn't part of the strategy when you meet them. So again, it's really looking at people are searching on the go. They want something now. So how are you helping that? Makes me rather sick to say this phrase, but are you grammable? Um, so basically it's looking at all uh, facets of your business um, from the decor to the food to the staff to everything to make sure that you are photogenic if you like. So this also makes me quite sad um, but Instagram ability is the most important factor for millennials on choosing the holiday destination. So like Phil said as well it's almost like autograph hunting when you were a kid to get that autograph to get that shot is the thing that will make that holiday, it will make or break it when they're at the Eiffel Tower or wherever they are. But that is obviously coming across to our industry as well. And it's always good to look at other industries to try and figure out some tips about where the attention and the trends are going. So this is a couple of examples. So Palm Vaults, which is a really trendy little cafe in Hackney and Soho, they actually worked with um, Alex May Hughes um, to do the sign, who's almost the keep calm and carry on uh, signage person for the millennial generation. Um, they use millennial pink, which is an actual registered color now. Um, and then they've actually been working on prints like the cheese plants and um, you know, all these types of uh, nice foliage that's happening here as well. So that is grammable. And then when you move that across to their Instagram feed, you can see how beautiful it is and how right it is for their audience. The stylist picked it up, new look picked it up, and all of a sudden they start featuring in Primark's um, news feeds and all of their content. And then the stylist magazine had a, a gin um, sort of special, if you like, and they used their branding on the front cover of that as well, going out to every Londoner and every sort of young girl nationwide. Sketch did the same thing, um, you know, so they've painted everything millennial pink. And then Copper Club, you know, coming a bit more closer to home for us, you know, again, looking incredibly photogenic and grammable. And they've actually jumped in the back of a hashtag called Wisteria Hysteria. Um, where that was trending and again people want to see themselves there and have that photo um, for their, their feeds. Some restaurants got involved as well, it's maybe jumping the shark slightly but giving Instagram kits when you eat. Um, and then the next thing we wanted to talk about was micro stuff. So micro is going to become big over the next year or so. And what we mean by that is micro everything. So when it was about influencers and the Zoellas and all the huge influencers that were out there, now it's about micro and you have many of those that are supporting and broadcasting about your brand. So basically you want people that are between 10,000 and 30,000 in terms of reach and working with them, contacting them one by one by one by one and seeing if they will work with you to promote your brand. We're going to see an awful lot more of that. Also, micro hashtags are becoming really important. So hashtags like London Restaurant, but even going the next level down, hashtag Mayfair Restaurant or hashtag Soho Restaurant. Also, if you've got a niche food type, start hashtagging those niche ingredients that you have or things that you think that people might love. And then also, you know, your actual location. So a really cool thing to do is make sure you always put the actual location there because that will then drop into feeds for that location itself, which then will give you a bigger reach of people that wouldn't be either searching for you or following you as well. One for the finance people in the room, we're also going to see um, micro creative. So there's going to be automated creative out there that is going to read who you are, what your job title is, when you were born, all the rest of it, and they're going to serve you up the t-shirt or jumper of your dreams or a meal or whatever it's going to be. So again, looking into that could be a really good way for you to get super personalised with your content. 
We're going to see micro in terms of uh, social media channels as well. So things like Medium and Branch are for people to have almost one-to-one -one or small conversations around a really niche subject. Also the Sphere, which is for the sort of glitterati, so for the really rich people, um, it's a locked off, invite only, high net worth social media channel. And writerprisoner.com is one of the biggest out there as well. Um, you know, so whatever floats your boat, there's actually going to be a niche social media channel for that. And it's how you can get your brand involved in that is the next trick. And basically why we're doing this is that um, every single customer who's really into the social just wants to be famous on the internet. They want a mention, they want a like, they want to be loved, they want a reply. And we can see this here with Honest Burger who are doing a really good job on taking people's content, customers' content, and actually giving them the praise, giving them the limelight, and posting it and making them the star. So the big thing coming the next couple of years as well, and you know, we'll be all concentrating on is thumb stopping content. So when you're flicking through your newsfeed, start to, sh start to think about where you'll actually stop and why you've stopped, what made you stop, what made you look at that, and then re uh, retro-engineer that back to what do you do as a brand and what could you do to actually make sure that you've got thumb-stopping content. And it's taking tips from the oldest tricks in the book, so the biggest TV shows out there, see how they do it. What's their social media stream? What's their digital strategy? What's their advert strategy? What's the spin-off shows? What do people get excited about? What do they comment on? And it's being obsessed about that. So Strictly Come Dancing, X Factor, etc., etc. And also a new type of cooking show as well, um, which is called F, you swear word, that's delicious. So looking at Vice News and all these kind of areas, I mean, he's not quite the new Nigella, this guy, but you know, from that perspective, there's definitely some tips to be taken about watchable content and an appointment to view. There's going to be an awful lot of brand endorsement as well from influencers. You're going to see a lot more faces of a brand, you know, a face of Fuller's or a face of Oaxaca or whatever it's going to be. Because for you to have this TV content, you're going to need some really good looking people, probably or charismatic ones at least, to be able to deliver that content for you. A note on creative as well, you know, don't just do one creative and post it. It's going to take you between 45 minutes and 60 minutes to create a really great piece of creative. So when Andy Murray won Wimbledon um, the first time round, Adidas had hundreds if not thousands of versions of this that they had tested and tested and tested before they put that out. So social's always seen as free and a quick thing off the side of your desk. We need to give it the time it deserves. Quick note on Instagram stories, a really great way for you to get attention because not that many brands are there yet. So it's like buying in Shoreditch 30 years ago. The thing to look at though is make sure it's a story. Make sure it has a beginning, a middle and an end because everyone's just posting a flyer saying, hey, two for one pizzas, isn't that cool? That's not a story. So again, look at that and look at putting the efforts in there because you'll get a lot of attention and feedback. So last couple of bits then, um, every one of us is now a walking TV channel. You can light up your live feeds and then you can just film anything. The problem is that makes rubbish content. So you get someone's feet and then you get someone's cheek and all this kind of stuff. So the one show just wouldn't put on the cameras and then do it. Again, it's just a little bit about prep and storytelling and scripting to make sure you have the perfect delivery. And when people are seeing these content, they want to laugh, they want to cry, they want to be engaged, they want to be excited. Um, so the death of the marketing department is probably coming very, very soon because marketers can't do this job. We're all going to need to hire comedians, story writers, film directors, all the rest of it. That's going to be the new marketing department and it's actually quite exciting. And the marketers will be there to apply the, the principles of marketing to amplify those stories. Mind reading is going to be a big thing as well, so anticipate the next thing that that person will want. So for example, um, Alison who works with us has just got married, she put she got engaged in her Facebook um, status, all of a sudden yoga, Pilates, gym memberships, all the rest of it. So again, how can you draw that analogy back to your business to then say, right, what's the next thing that they'll want from us before they've even thought of it? Great targeting suggestions in Facebook as well. So you can target down to close friends of men with a birthday in the next seven days. You know, so if you think about your private dining rooms or any of these things, you could be hitting up all these people with bespoke creative saying, have John's birthday, 40th birthday here, and just keep hitting them up and try and hit them up eight times in a really short amount of time and you'll get the sale. Inboxing is going to be really big as well. So Facebook Messenger, you're almost going to have to have customer services full time on there. 
using WhatsApp for pre-orders and VIPs as well. So making sure you can accept emojis as an order. Um, but also for your VIPs, maybe 250 people who are the most loyal that really want to know about Greg's or Pizza Express or whoever it is. Rise of the chatbots as well. Again, dealing with a lot of customer complaints and uh, customer queries, getting 80% of that out of the way automatically without you having to intervene. It's a really smart use of technology as well. And then the death of the keyboard and the death of typing, we're all going to be going back to voice. So again, looking at your brand and then saying, well, have I got a voice strategy? If you said right now, hey, you know, Alexa, tell me about ZZ's nutritional values in X, is it there? Or, hey, can I get a you know, Wagamama delivered to me right now? Maybe not. So again, trying to think about ways that you can get your brand into the voice search and be helpful as it goes through. Because there's going to be 67 million voice assisted devices in the US by 2019, and I think it's 13 million are going to be in the UK. So it's going to be quite substantial. And then the last thought for the day was just a bit of a, a, a stretch target, really, or a stretch thought, which was, you know, what are you doing to think about how to put yourself out of business? So when you look at all the disruption that's going on in the market, I was always really smug working in food and drink, where it was like, we'll never, you know, be disrupted. We'll never um, sort of lose that experience. But looking at Deliveroo, etc., you know, it's on the attack and the increased competition. So is there something within your business that would stop you doing business and how could you actually go out and embrace that? So if you're Hawksmoor, shutting that down and becoming this vegan place, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So what could you do? Um, so thinking about that could be quite interesting. But Airbnb should have been done by Marriott, Spotify should have been done by one of the record labels and, you know, Uber should have been done by Black Cabs. So in summary then, um, there's eight things. So find out where the attention is and mark it there. Make sure everything about your brand is grammable. Think micro, um, but it is way more work. Build your customer's personal brand, you know, make them the star. Create thumb stop and content at all times. Think laterally about targeting and the message. Have a messenger and voice strategy, um, you know, pretty soon. And then what could you do to put yourself out of business and start thinking about that, start pulling at that thread. Um, buy this book as well if you can, Jab, 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 Right Hook, great for social media from Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, there's some great things out there like social bakers, etc., to keep you up to date with what's going on in the social media landscape. Um, and then we're launching some podcasts and some TV stuff, um, shameless plug, um, over the next couple of months. And that's me. Thank you. Well, that's the Spectacular Marketing Podcast over for another week. Thanks so much for listening. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Spectacular Mark. Follow We Are Spectacular at Spectacular Chat. And also, please do get in touch if we can help you at all with any brand marketing, digital or social questions you have. <laughs>